All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kel. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. And as of today, we are officially resuming the regular schedule for Thursday research-based episodes and Sunday site visits. This is episode 104, and today I will be explaining the configuration of the stone circle systems at Stonehenge and Avebury in relation to the magnetic and dielectric fields that I presented in the previous episodes. This is an absolutely major discussion, and things will continue to heat up as we move forward in the series. So if this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world. Please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support this channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section, link in the video description below. Episode five will be released this month and I've already revealed the power source of all of these systems in Members Only Episode 3. This is content you do not want to miss. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, check out thelandofchem.com. I'm currently wearing my new favorite, the Green Lion at Newgrange. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget to check out our new channel here on YouTube, Egypt Eats, for food review content from all of the fantastic restaurants here in Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado... Let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. To begin, this is an image of Silbury Hill, a massive mound structure that you will be seeing very soon in an upcoming Sunday site visit. And at this point, I will say that I believe these structures all across Europe were built during a relatively similar time period as their successors in the Egyptian pyramids, and that they were built by the same group of people or civilization all with the same knowledge, sciences, and applications, with the pyramids of Egypt being the pinnacle achievement of this civilization, utilizing the highest quality building material and the Earth's prime location to produce their apex masterpieces. And all of these seemingly separate structures were intended to create a connected grid network across the countries in which they were built, linking them into one immense functional system. So remember that everything I am discussing today will also apply to the function of the Egyptian pyramids as directly related to the industrial scale production of chemicals. So here are the two diagrams that I explained in last week's episode showing the magnetic field as indicated by the solid concentric circles and the dielectric fields represented by the dotted straight lines here on the left, and the arced dotted lines on the diagram on the right. And I am proposing that the ancient stone circle systems of Stonehenge and Avebury, but certainly not limited to them, were constructed for a threefold purpose. First, to map the naturally occurring field lines upon which these systems were built. Second, to capture and harness these magnetic and dielectric components of the electric fields. In the first step, as naturally occurring, and in the second step, as being produced by the system itself. And third, as with all of these ancient structures, they were built using these intentional designs to communicate this information for the interpretation of future generations, exactly the same way that was done in the configuration of the Egyptian pyramids. So let me repeat, the impetus for the configuration of these stone circle systems one more time before we proceed. They were intended to map, collect and harness, and communicate the magnetic and dielectric components of the electric fields upon which they were built, the naturally occurring magnetic and telluric currents of the earth, and the dielectric fields that were being produced by the system. Now, here is an image of Avebury, and the bewildering footage from this expedition will be coming up in the next Sunday Site Visit 35. This is by far the most amazing 
perplexing, and powerful site that I have ever visited, surpassing even the immense energy I've experienced in my explorations of the Egyptian pyramids. And I had a private, special permission access into the Osiris shaft in the dark with just Yusuf and me, and Avebury made far more of a profound impression. It is an absolutely massive system that has a modern town and roadway constructed right in the center of it, as you can see here in this aerial picture. This is the craziest and most unfortunate juxtaposition of modern and ancient that I have ever seen. And they have absolutely intentionally constructed buildings and roped off some of the most powerful areas of this site, specifically with this little empty building here and a roped off area surrounding this ash tree. So this stone circle at Avebury absolutely dwarfs the footprint of the Great Pyramid. And it took us almost all day to completely get around this site. And in this diagram, you can see the comparative sizes of Stonehenge here in the center, Silbury Hill, which I just showed at the beginning of the video here in the next circle, the Great Pyramid in the dotted square here, and the exterior circle is the circumference of the stone circle system of Avebury. And this system is configured with what I am describing as four primary functional components. First, the exterior earthen enclosure and reservoir system that you can see here around the perimeter of the site. Second, the exterior larger stone circle within the enclosure. Third, the interior stone circle system, the dual circle system that you can see here. And fourth, the central obelisks. And for those of you that are initiates of the Land of Cam members only channel, this should already have your attention as being an absolutely critical component of the site's operation. And here is another diagram highlighting the perimeter here and dual stone circle systems, and also showing a structure known as the West Kennet Avenue here that I will be discussing in just a moment. All right, now, this is an exceptional 3D recreation of the site's original appearance, showing the height and depth of the perimeter reservoir enclosure, the perimeter stone circle here, and the two inner stone circles here, and the central obelisks, and both of the stone avenue conduits that lead out of the structure. First here with the West Kennet Avenue and the second here known as the Beck Hampton Avenue that both lead to two completely different types of structures that will be shown soon in some upcoming Sunday site visits. Now let's start with Stonehenge and you can see here several different configurations for the structure that have been proposed by the antiquarians investigating the sites in the 16 and 1700s, with the primary source being the work of William Stuckley on Stonehenge that I presented in the Sunday site visit, and his concept of the components being shown here on the top right. And Stonehenge was constructed with an earthwork enclosure and reservoir system that you can see around the perimeter of the site here. And this site experienced several stages of construction and reconstruction during these prehistoric eras, all of which featured a perimeter ring system here, composed of salacious sandstones known as sarsen stones, a second concentric ring known as the trilithon stones, and the central inner ring composed of a variety of different geology collectively referred to as the quote unquote blue stones and a quote unquote altar 
located here near the center of the structure. And here you can see some of the extremely compelling, beautiful geometry of this stone circle structure as presented by Stuckley within the system that he describes here as a quote unquote, the cell. And I believe this nomenclature was chosen quite intentionally and appropriately given the function of this structure. Now, on to the field mapping. Here on the left, you can see the magnetic field composed of concentric circles and the dielectric field represented by radial dotted lines. And on the right, you can see the configuration of Stonehenge. And as I said in the beginning, this structure was designed to map, harness, and communicate these two components of the electric field, both naturally occurring in the Earth's magnetic and telluric currents, and secondly, created by the system once activated. And if you merge these two images, you get something like this. With these stones being intentionally placed along the magnetic and dielectric field lines to maximize the efficacy of this system. And remember, Stonehenge also has a causeway leading into the system, which you can see here on the diagram on the left. Now, this image on the right is not how I think this structure works, as these stone circles have nothing to do with electricity directly, which is the flow of electric current through a conductor. These structures operate on a completely different level. This diagram here on the right is intended to impress upon you that these earth and stone works are far more sophisticated than they might appear, and they encode the most profound knowledge of this ancient civilization. So, in part one, we defined the mechanics of this system, the magnetic and dielectric fields. Now, in part two, I have explained the configuration of the system in relation to these fields, mapping, harnessing, and communicating. So what happens next? First, let's resume our investigation of Avebury. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have the new sixth degree Green Lion logo, the fifth degree Central Pyramid Hydrochloric Acid logo, the new second edition print copy of the Land of Chem book, this beautiful new Egyptian blue edition, signed copies, extremely rare, only 89 copies in existence of the original first edition purple orchid paper print of the Land of Chem book are also available all at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to show some love, just check out the website. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for the support. All right, now, this massive complex has a bit more sophisticated configuration than that of Stonehenge, but all of the basic premises still apply. Primarily, the earth, water, and stone components of this system being strategically installed along the magnetic and dielectric field lines. And remember from the previous episode that these stones are extremely powerful dielectric materials that have the capability of storing an electric field. And remember, these systems weren't just being built in Egypt or in England and Ireland. They are literally all across the world. Are any of you familiar with this structure? Yep. It's Gobekli Tep, and it has the exact same configuration with an exterior enclosure that would have been filled with water and an inner stone circle system made of dielectric materials that have the capacity for storing this electric field. And this rather unusual feature at the center, a dual pillar system which also happens to be present in the system at Avebury. Because remember, Avebury is connected into two other structures via a stone conduit system, which you can see here, Beckhampton Avenue, and here, West Kennet Avenue, 
intentionally highlighted in red and black. And these two avenue systems, which you can see here and here, with the West Kennet Avenue system leading away from Avebury down to a mysterious structure known as the Sanctuary, here on the bottom right, and Beckhampton Avenue leading to another structure that I will mention in just a moment. Also shown on this map are Windmill Hill that I just discussed in episode 103, Cheryl Hill, as presented in Members Only Episode 3, discussing the obelisk and revealing the power source of this entire system. And here, Silbury Hill, that I showed at the beginning of this episode, that will also be coming up very soon in a Sunday site visit. This is a massive, interconnected grid of structures that all operated in conjunction, just as their successors would in the Egyptian pyramids, where this science was perfected and taken to its pinnacle. And here, you can see Beck Hampton Avenue leading to a site known as Longstone Cove that features two massive stone pillars known as the Adam and Eve Stones. In the exclusive footage of the Adam and Eve Stones, along with a full explanation of how this system works, will be upcoming as a special thank you to the supporters of the Land of Chem Members Only channel. If you'd like to check that out, I'll put a link in the video description below. And stay tuned to this week's Sunday site visit to see the mind-blowing footage from my expedition to Avebury and the West Kennet Avenue, during which I had the amazing opportunity to walk around the cove located within the Avebury Stone Circle and along the entire West Kennet Avenue barefoot, completely disconnected from all electron equipment. And I can tell you firsthand, it is the craziest feeling of my entire life connecting directly to the ground at this site. And I will also say that this is something you would not want to be anything near when it was in operation. And connecting directly to the ground at this site is a phrase that I use absolutely intentionally. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 104, Magnetic and Dielectric Field Mapping, Harnessing and Communicating at Stonehenge and Avebury. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and in the next episode in the series, Sunday Site Visit 35, the spectacular footage from my expedition to Avebury. This is a video you do not want to miss, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell, like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel. Check out the Land of Chem members only section for exclusive research related content and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. Link in the video description below. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. And don't forget, after you watch this video, go check out our new channel here on YouTube, Egypt Eats, for food reviews from all of the amazing restaurants that we visited on our adventures across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.